What is the place of the local in this globalized world of globalization that we live in today? You have to distribute it. You have to get it around. 
And then what happens once those nickels get into people's pockets, they get exchanged, they get transferred. And this is where we get the name currency. When we talk about money, we talk about currency, we talk about it flowing from place up, up to place and collecting in others and possibly rotting in the future, which could be really interesting. Hopefully it won't smell. But, 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 but ultimately, when we talk about economic uh, transactions, we're really talking about a social network. A social network of people who are engaged in making connections between one another. And most of the time, the collection of, of capital leads to the building up of those places where the capital transactions happen. And of course, we know this around the globe. So this is a space that we're all, uh, all uh, familiar with. And I think it's an important space for us to acknowledge. But what happens when we throw a smartphone into this mix? Something very different happens. Because you can inhabit two spaces simultaneously, but also because of mobility, the network, the social network, is not fixed. As a matter of fact, it allows dynamic movement. We have a third kind of space, a space of mobility. So these are different kinds of spaces that we occupy, and we occupy them very differently. So here is one of the questions that I have. Architecture, which I see as a dominant space, I'm an architect, of course, it's just one kind of space seeking and jogging and buying for our appreciation and our attention. So these kinds of spaces we inhabit are very important, but they also can work against one, uh, one uh, another. These kinds of spaces that, that we have, in a certain way, take on different properties, different characters. Uh, today, flow is more important than, than form. Mobility, more important than fixity. Distribution, more important than destination. And finally, the global has been dominating and is taking greater importance over the global in our minds. Now, what this has led to is a situation where our places, our local places, are being charged by the global but possibly neglected at the same time. Now, I think this happens because there is a dichotomy between these kinds of spaces. The one kind of space the, where, where we exist in real space, in a physical space, has a distinction. There is a distortion when you try to take the, the local and stretch it over the globe. The, the geometries do not work. They allow the local to stay distinct from the global. So when you throw digital technologies into this, you have a condition where there's a convergence, where there's a ramification of the levels of global and local. And the global and the local become indistinct and convoluted and operate on many levels of exchange. And this is a space that we tend to occupy a lot. We take our smartphone and we put it up to our eyes and we oblique or we, or we, or, 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 or we give blinders to the world uh, around us. This is a situation that is either or. But I'm not satisfied with e either or. It's not good for architecture, and it's not good for digital technologies. I want to look for other possibilities. If there's anything I have to offer, it's ways of thinking about things that already exist differently. So a person who made me think about things uh, differently is an, is an artist who I know personally, Benjamin Edwards. Benjamin Edwards did this painting called Immersion in 2004. When I saw it, it nearly knocked me off my seat. I saw it and I said, my heavens, this either or could potentially be a both and. That if we can think about how these presences of the physical spaces we inhabit and the digital, and the digital spaces we inhabit can cross over in meaningful and interesting ways, <coughs> then I think we might have a very interesting world where one kind of space does not compete against another. Now, I would like to see us move from these dueling presences to something that I might term varietal co-presences. Now, people are working on this, and they're working on it in many ways, and the kinds of spaces we in inhabit collect around certain, tech certain technologies. I'm going to talk about four of those, because they are pretty simple, but they also establish a series of poles. We have something that I just termed, very simply, our home. If you have an internet service at your home, wired or wireless, it's probably connected and rooted to that place. 
But we also have our phone, which allows for mobility or a ubiquitous kind of computing experience. But now people are working on, and many companies are taking up in the commercial marketplace on creating drones or robots that we're going to see later on uh, today. Autonomous devices that can inhabit our spaces. And last is something I call a zone. A zone is very simple. We all inhabit them. Social networks that you might belong to that become communities that form a zonal nature of socialization. Now, this is good, and it's creating the variety of co-presences that I think is important. But I'm a little greedy, and I want more ands. I want more ands. I think that it's important that we get our heads uh, together and think about what more ands we could create. So in, in this, I'm less interested in those polls that are already being capitalized on by companies all throughout the globe. I would like to see people like artists, people like architects, engineers, computer uh, uh, script writers to come together and look at something I call the LOA or the liminal opportunity areas. These are the places that inhabit the in-between of these poles that already exist. And if we wrap our heads around it in a collaborative way, we can come up with new possibilities. We can create a frontier of innovation that exists between those things that are already being capitalized on. I think this is a very exciting moment for, for, for architects and for engineers and people in the computer industry. So, I see us moving from less the idea of pure digital, which doesn't exist, and the idea of pure physical, which doesn't seem to exist uh, today as well, to something I call the varietal. And that if you think about this as sort of a blending of, of, of sort of extremes, then you see that there's a potential variation of gradation or a hybridization that can happen across a wide spectrum of possibilities. And this is what I'd like to see. I'd like to see us move in this way. Because if we do this, then the local can be a multi-textured interface uh, again. Like it has, has always been, and it can be again. So Gaston Baudelaire, famous um, French uh, philosopher, uh, a phenomenologist, says imagination tempts the future. I think that that's a beautiful phrase. And we need imaginative people in all these disciplines that can collaborate around this. So, so ultimately, people are doing this. If you take the three main uh, smartphone platforms, it adds up to, at this moment, about two million apps are out there. Now, I know no one has a smartphone that can fit all two million, but they do exist. What I'd like to see are not smartphone apps where our creativity is moving towards. But I'd like to see just 20,000 apps for local places. I think that this would be very exciting. These things that combine the digital and the physical in ways that I think would be very exciting. Thomas Jefferson said, I like dreams of the future better than the history of the past. And I think that this is our charge. This is our, uh, our charge, is not to think about what has been, but to invent for our local places, dreams of the future. Thank you very much.